So not long ago, I was introduced to a minister, a Christian minister in Minnesota. And he very respectfully, his first words to me was, do you believe in the Savior? So I said, I don't know much about it. But I'm not looking for a God who is going to serve me. I want to serve God, not he should serve me. This man started to cry. He said, I never thought of that. All his life, he's a religious person. He believes, he tries. He never stopped to think. God serves you? Shouldn't you be serving him? So this is what we need to talk about tonight. The challenges in life. The difficulties. The hardships. The painful events. How do we handle it? What are we supposed to do? So the first thing we need to know is that what you think in your mind will determine how you handle your problems. It's not a matter of strength. Nobody is strong enough to handle painful events. But if your mind has the right understanding, then we can handle almost anything. The famous psychologist, Viktor Frankl, who went through a concentration camp, he went through the war, and he learned that those people who had a plan, a reason, something to do, something important, they survived. Those people who didn't have a plan, they were just hungry looking for food. They didn't make it. They didn't do so well. In simple, overly simple language, if you're worried about yourself and you're trying to help yourself, you make yourself weak, not strong. But if you have something to do to help others, to serve someone else, to serve God, if you're serving somebody else, you are stronger than if you're trying to take care of yourself. Just an example. A person who survives the most difficult, the most dangerous, the worst experiences or situations is a hero. Everybody admires him. How does this person feel about himself? He was in a dangerous, difficult, painful, but he fought, he, he was strong, and he survived, and he's back to normal. He must feel good about himself, proud, but compare that feeling to the feeling of a person who saved someone else's life. There's no comparison. It's a completely different experience. When we're serving somebody else, we are bigger than life. When you're serving yourself, you're just trying to stay alive. Very different. So what we're thinking when we go through a difficult time will help or make us weaker. So we have to know what are we thinking, how do we understand this, what's going on. 
So the first thing we are told is that everything that happens, happens for a reason. How do we know this? How can we be so sure that everything happens for a reason? <clears throat> it's not a mystery. If you believe in God, that God created the world, everything that exists, he created. Everything that happens, he has to make it happen because he's the creator. If he is making it happen, then there's a reason. Can something happen without a reason? Answer is no. Who would make it happen? So if you think something happened and it was a mistake, it shouldn't happen. <clears throat> it should never have happened. So I ask you, if it should not happen, what made it happen? The devil? <laughs> There's only one God. Not a good God and a bad God. <laughs> There's only one God. So if anything happens, it only happens because God makes it happen. Otherwise, nothing happens. So can something happen that shouldn't happen? <laughs> Of course not. If it shouldn't happen, then why did it? Who did it? How can something happen for nothing? That's like the Big Bang. <laughs> it just happened. What do you mean it just happened? Who caused it? No, nobody caused it. If nobody caused it, then it doesn't happen. So, do we know why difficult things happen? Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we find out. A day later, ten days later, a year later, we find out why it happened. But even if we never find out why it happened, but we know that it had a reason, we can handle it. The human being can handle pain. What we can't handle is things happening for no reason. That we can't handle. So if you think that whatever happened didn't have a reason, that will make you crazy. And it should. Because if this can happen without any reason, who knows what else is going to happen? <clears throat> then the world is a jungle. You can't live like that. Like one young girl said it so well. I can survive what happened to me this time. <laughs> but who knows what else is going to happen to me? And that paralyzes me. But if you know, nothing can happen unless it's supposed to happen, then I don't care what the reason is, as long as I know there's a reason. That's a human condition. In the human mind, things have to make sense. I don't have to have the answer to everything. But I have to know that life makes sense. Otherwise, I can't stand it. So, for example, a woman in labor, very painful. But it doesn't make them crazy. Because they understand it. 
But that same pain, for no reason, would make them crazy. Would make anybody crazy. So the first thing we know is that there are no mistakes or accidents. Nothing happens for no reason. And that's why the great Chachamin, the holy people, throughout all of history, explained and told us why things happened that we didn't understand. So that even when nobody tells us what the reason is, we've heard enough stories, we've seen enough examples that tell us that there is a reason, and if you were a little higher on the ladder, you would see it too. So we just read in the Parsha, Yaakov Avinu is about to die. And he says to his son Yosef, bury me in Israel, next to my wife, next to my father and mother. Yes, it's true, I buried your mother on the side of the road. So the commentaries say, what was Yaakov saying? Yaakov was saying, I know you feel bad that I buried your mother, Rachel, on the side of the road and not with the rest of the family. So I want to tell you why I did it. Hundreds of years from now, the Jews will be taken out of Israel into, into exile by the Babylonians, and they will be marched along this road. And they're going to need the prayers of their mother to survive. So being there on the side of the road, they can stop and pray at her grave, and she will cry for them, Rachel Mevaka Albaneha, and that's how they will survive the exile. So the Rebbe asked an amazing question. Yosef had hard feelings against his father? He was questioning his father's judgment or wisdom for burying his mother on the side of the road, that's not possible. Yosef would not question his father, particularly since his father was also his Rebbe. He taught him everything. How could he doubt? How could he question his father? And listen to the answer. Because Yosef knew that everything Yaakov did was holy and good, that's why he felt bad. Not against his father. He felt terrible that what Yaakov does is good and holy, and I don't see it. To me, I see something wrong on the side of the road, not even in a cemetery. It looks wrong. But I know it's not wrong, because if my father did it, it's the right thing. So why am I so different from my father that he sees the truth, he sees what's godly, and I don't see it? So Yaakov with the last breath, said, let me elevate you to a higher level and you will see what I see. Like a good teacher. So he told Yosef what's going to happen in 400 years.
We don't always have that privilege. We don't always have a father who can explain things and show us. But what we see from the story, of course it was the right thing. You just have to have the eyes to be able to see it. That's what makes the difference between falling apart when we have a problem or getting bigger and wiser when we have a problem. It depends on whether you think that this was for no reason or you know that there must have been a reason. Another very important point. In order to be consistent and healthy in this world, you have to know for sure that we human beings don't deserve anything. Not because we did anything wrong or we're bad. We don't deserve because before you can do anything good, God already gives you life. So do we deserve life? You're a baby. How can you deserve? So life is given purely as a chesed. It's a gift. It's for free. You don't have to deserve it. You can't deserve it. You're, you're too young to do anything to deserve it. So you are given life for free. So already you have a debt. Already you have to thank God for giving you life. A person who starts to think, I deserve, is going to get depressed. Because we don't know how to handle that. If I start to think, do I deserve what I'm getting? No matter what the answer is, I'm going to get depressed. If I feel like I deserve more, of course I'm going to be depressed. Even if I feel that I deserve less, well, that makes me feel guilty <laughs> and I get depressed. Things are going too good. The whole idea of deserving is not a good idea. Life is for free. Everything God gives you is for free. We don't deserve anything, but we have to be good with the gifts that he gives us. This is the secret to happiness. Because if you feel that you deserve, how are you going to explain the, uh, the failures, the disappointments, the painful experiences? How are you going to explain it? If you feel you deserve better, then life is horrible. Because you deserve better and you're not getting. No justice. But if you know that life is a gift, we don't deserve anything. God gives us everything for free. So if you have a negative experience, what are you upset about? God gave you a lot of things but this, he's not giving you. So it's almost like somebody invites you to their house, gives you a meal, a big meal, and doesn't serve dessert. So do you get upset? You get depressed? <laughs> you get angry and start complaining, where's my dessert? No. No. You thank your host for the meal, and you go home thinking, that's weird. 
They give you five course meal and then they can't afford the, the dessert. So yes, it's strange. But you're not angry and you're not depressed. So God gives you life. God gives you whatever. And then he doesn't give you the one more thing. So you're depressed? If you feel you deserve, yes, you're going to get depressed. So the Torah tells us, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should do, thank God for giving you back your soul because you don't deserve. Now you've got a happy day coming. Because anything else that's going to happen will be more good that you don't deserve. <clears throat> when you feel that you're getting more than you deserve, that is happiness, that is grateful. Just for comparison, if you feel that you're getting more than you need, it's a different feeling. A person wakes up in the morning and he says, you know, I have more than I need. More money, more fame, more everything. I have more than I need. How does that make you feel? Rich. If you have more than you need, you're rich. That's why if you need everything in the world, you'll never be rich. You'll never feel rich. Because whatever you have, you need. So, if you get more than you need, you feel wealthy. If you're getting more than you deserve, you feel grateful. Yeah, make sense? If you work for an hour and you get paid for an hour, you're not grateful. You deserve it. But if you work for an hour and they pay you for two hours, you're grateful. Because it's more than you deserve. So to be a happy person and being able to handle the difficult moments in life, we have to start off with ani. I don't deserve. Today I was given another day of life for free. So if he gives me life for free, he'll probably give me what to eat for free. He'll probably keep me healthy. He'll probably give me whatever I need for free. Because that's what he does. So no guilt. Got to make this a very strong point. If you're feeling pain, if you're going through a difficulty, and you start asking yourself, what did I do to deserve this? You're getting depressed. It's not kosher. You didn't do anything to deserve it. You're not being punished for your sins. That's a terrible, terrible mistake. Especially when you look at another Jew who is suffering. And you say, oh, he must have, he must have done something bad. He's being punished for his sins. That is a horrible thing to say or even think. Not all pain is punishment for sin. It's a mistake. So the Gemara says, if you reach into your pocket because you need a quarter, for the uh, parking uh, meter. And instead of a quarter, you come out with a nickel. Now you have to reach back into your pocket to find the quarter. That's punishment for sin. But serious problems? It's too much. It can't be punishment for sin. Because you didn't do such a serious sin.
especially, and this is really important, 3,300 years ago, God asked us to be his people. By Har Sinai. That was the first time that God spoke to us. What was the second time? There was no second time. <laughs> that was the first time and that was the last time. So when did God ask us to be his people? 3,330 years ago. Since then, he hasn't said another word. Today we are sitting here in a synagogue talking about what? About being Jewish. Talking about God. Is this not the biggest miracle in the world? Why are we Jewish? How are we Jewish? Why are we sitting in a synagogue 3,330 years later? Because he asked us to. Once. Now these 3,000 years, how many of those years were good, successful, pleasant, secure, peaceful? <laughs> Nobody remembers. For the last 2,000 years, for sure, it's been terrible. Terrible. So now, doesn't speak to us for 3,000 years, puts us through miserable, horrible experience for 2,000 years, and now if you do a sin, you're going to be punished? That's a chilul Hashem. If you say God punishes Jews today, you're giving God a very bad name. Because the non-Jewish world knows what they did to us. What our history has been. And if you say that after all of that, God is going to punish me for my sins, they say, what kind of a God do you have? It's not possible. It's not possible that God is angry at us. It can't be. In fact, he's looking down at us today, right now, here, <laughs> in this synagogue. And he can't believe it. Jews are getting together to talk about Jewish things, and I haven't spoken to them in 3,000 years. And it's not Yom Kippur today. I don't know if you know about this. It's not even Yom Kippur. Why are we sitting in a synagogue? So, have we committed sins? Better not to talk about it. <laughs> but can God be angry about it? Not possible. Not possible. Unless he's uh, a Kozak, <laughs> a terrorist. No. God is absolutely filled with pride. Look at my people. Tell me that they are normal. <laughs> They're not normal. So why is there pain? Not because of your sins. God forbid. God forbid that God should be punishing us for our sins. Because you know when you don't talk to your children for 3,000 years, 
they forget some of the things you tell them. <laughs> so if you want to raise your children properly, don't wait 3,000 years. Talk to them maybe every other day. Not all the time, but don't wait 3,000 years. It's a huge compliment to us that God doesn't feel like he needs to repeat himself ever. He gave us the Torah. He told us what we need to do. He told us what he needs from us. And he's confident we're going to do it. It's a huge compliment. He is not angry. He is thrilled. But here is the real punchline of the whole thing. I said to this minister, I'm not looking for a God who's going to take care of me and serve me. I want to serve God. That's a Jewish concept. Ivdu es Hashem. Don't ask him to serve you. You serve him. And besimcha. Here's, here's the real chidush. All of history, we have been struggling. What I need or what he needs. What I want or what he wants. Who's going to win? My yetzer hara, my evil inclination, or my good inclination? Am I going to do what I want, or am I going to do what he wants? It's a big struggle, and you have to try very hard, and you have to give in and give up what you want, because what he wants is more important. So be humble, have mesirat nefesh, give up, suffer a little bit. <laughs> That's so depressing. Why would he do that to us? You have a bunch of needs, but they don't match my needs. So we're going to fight this out. This is like a bad marriage. Give up what you want. Give up what you need. Then you'll be a tzaddik. Yeah, and you'll also be depressed. Listen to this. We finally figured it out. It took 5,000 years. We figured it out. Human beings don't need anything. We're not giving up what we need. We don't need. I don't know why it took us so long, but we finally figured it out. We don't need. For example, what do you need? Give me an example of one thing that you need. You can't think of anything. Oh, you're going to say, I need to eat. No, you need to stop eating. You need to stop eating, and you can't. So do you need to eat? If you do need to eat, that's very sad. Who did this to you? Why do you need to eat? Because if you don't, you're going to die? That is so sad. Who did this to us? Who created us like this that if you don't eat every four hours, you're going you're gonna to get weak and you're going to die? It's a terrible condition. Who needs this? We don't need this. But you have no choice. Oh, I need to sleep. Really? You need to sleep. What happens if you don't sleep? Oh, I'm going to get very sick. 
That's sad. You can't be healthy without sleeping half your life. Who did this to you? (laughs) Who handicapped you like this? The worst thing of all is you need to breathe. That's terrible. (laughs) Because that you have to do all the time. It's a full-time job. Why? Why can't I live without breathing? This is L.A. I want to breathe. (laughs) Where it says, at least in Los Angeles you can see what you're breathing. (laughs) Why do we have to breathe? The answer is very simple. I I really don't know why it took 5,000 years to figure this out. I need to eat? Are you kidding? I need to drink? I need to sleep? Who did this to me? I don't want this. The answer is, whoever created you, created you like this. You don't need it. He needs it. Is this not true? If I designed myself, I would not need to eat. If I designed myself, I would not need the drink, thank you very much. If I designed myself, I wouldn't need to breathe. But I didn't design myself, so look at me. (laughs) I'm a mess. I need to eat, I need to drink, I need to sleep, I need love. Boy, is that a problem. (laughs) Who did this to me? So it's not true, I need to eat. Somebody created me to eat. So who needs me to eat? The creator. So what do I need? Gunished. I don't need anything except to know what he needs. That's all. Tell me what he needs because I don't need anything. Do you hear this? This is such a radical change in the human condition. For 5,000 years, people did what they did because they felt like they needed to. No? You go hunting. Why? You need to. You have to. You become a farmer and you plant and you milk the cow. Why? Because you have to. Now suddenly we realize, I don't have to. I don't need. You know why I don't need? Because I didn't create myself. I didn't ask to be created because I don't need to be here. So if I don't need to be here, why do I need to eat? The only reason I eat is to be here. Right? If you don't eat, you'll die. Okay, I I don't ask to be here. So now why do I have to eat? Why do I have to go to work? Why do I need a job? Why do I need to go to school? Why? To live. Well, I didn't ask for life. Do you see this? Do you need to live and be gesund? Not really. Your mother, (laughs) your mother wants you to be gesund. You don't. So I have this simple example. 
a boy says to his principal in school, I need to call my mother. He just arrived from out of town, and he comes to the office and he says, I need to call my mother. And the principal says, you need to call your mother? No, you don't. What should he have said? Isn't that true? So the boy comes into the office, I need to call my mother. And the man says to him, be more humble. So what if you need? Don't do it anyway. Control yourself. Discipline. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't need discipline. You don't need to call your mother. Your mother needs you to call her. Okay, that's true. But why do you say you need to call? You could say, you sh you could say I should call my mother. Why should I call my mother? Because she needs me to. That's called serving God. We're not here for God to serve us. Give me this, give me that. No. We are here with only one question. What do you need from me? That's the only necessary question. Do you know what this would do to the human beings? We would never get depressed. We would never be discouraged. We hardly would feel any pain. Because if I don't need anything, then nothing bothers me. Except, if I don't need anything, then why am I here? And the answer is, Because someone needs you, not you need something. If we could think like this, we wouldn't have any difficulties. Nothing would be difficult. And that's what Avraham says to God, to Hashem, when, when Hashem calls him. What does Avraham say? Hineni. You know what that means? It means I'm available. Why am I available? Because I don't need anything. I hope you need something. That is so healthy. It's so true. In fact, Avraham went through his entire life thinking, what am I here? Why am I here? I don't need anything. And then God says, Avraham, and Avraham says, oh, good. Maybe you need something because I don't know what I'm doing here. So Hineni means I'm unemployed. <laughs> like I, I'm not busy. If you need something, I'd like to hear it because all I need is to know what you need. That's called Ivdu Es Hashem B'Simcha. If you're doing for him, you're in a good mood. If you think you need stuff, you're already in a bad mood. Does this make sense? So let's switch our thinking. We don't need anything. But the creator, the creator has a purpose for everything. Everything in the world, everything that happens, he has a purpose. So he is full of needs. We have no needs. He needs me to eat. Okay, what do you want me to eat? When do you want me to eat? What shouldn't I eat? Tell me. It's your idea. You need me to sleep. How much? When? Where? How about on the night of Shavuot? No? Okay, no. <laughs> you need me to eat. What should I eat? Well, it depends. On Pesach, on Yom Kippur, <laughs> and that's fine. 
I eat the way he wants because it's all his idea. He invented eating. So now I just need to know, how do you want me to eat? And whatever you want is fine with me because I, I don't need this. You want me to get a job? Fine. How do I work? Not on Shabbat? Okay. Whatever you say. I don't need a job. I don't need anything. So whatever I do, I'll do it your way because you made this stuff up. It's all the same to me. Now, listen to this. How... How many mitzvot does a person do if he's not religious? Well, let's see. If you eat breakfast, it's because God created you that way. So you're doing what he wants. If you eat lunch, you're doing what he wants. And if the lunch is not kosher... You're doing what he wants, but you're doing it wrong. So everything a person does, he is doing it because that's what Hashem wants. You slept? Why? Because God wants you to sleep. That's the only reason. See, that's what's going to happen when Mashiach comes. Instead of saying, okay, I'll give up my Shabbat and I'll do it God's way. I'm not giving up anything. There is only God's way. He's the only one that needs anything. That's Mashiach. People all over the world are realizing, I don't need anything. I don't need anything. I didn't ask to be born. This is very, very positive. This is a good thing. And we should encourage it in ourselves, in our children, in our family. We don't need, stop being so miserable. Whatever is happening, it's because he needs. So ask him how to do it and do it. For him. That's called L'Shem Shomayim. The Torah says, everything you do, you should do L'Shem Shomayim. Why? Because <laughs> there's no other reason. There's no other reason to eat or sleep or breathe or drink. Only because he wants. So it's L'Shem Shomayim. This is pure Judaism, not religion. Religion is bad news. Judaism is the purpose of creation. So let's do it. Let's realize I don't deserve anything, I don't need anything, and I'm not giving up anything. This is not my world, it's not my plan, it's not my need. I'm a guest in his world. Whatever he wants is fine with me. Not only fine, what he wants is a good reason for me to be here. Otherwise, I have no reason to be here. This is how we're going to save the world and bring Moshiach. Not so hard. Because it's true. <laughs> We're not giving up anything. When you serve God, you're simply fulfilling the purpose for which you exist. And that's all we want. Just tell me why I'm here, because I don't understand why I'm here. So is this making sense or not? A little bit? Let's all make a, a decision right here. And it's not Yom Kippur and there's no drama. Just Jews being Jewish, ridiculously, insanely Jewish. We are here to serve him. Let's find out how we can do it better. That's it. That's it. 
It's not a sacrifice. It's not a job. It's a pleasure. One final example. If you're alone at, in, at home and you make a meal, how much do you bother cooking, baking, what? Nothing. You open a jar and you eat whatever's there. It's boring. But if somebody is coming over to the house who needs to eat, all of a sudden it's a party. So to cook for somebody else is a pleasure. To cook for yourself is boring. You see? It's true. When we're serving, we're happy. When we're needy, we're not happy. So let's stop being needy. We don't need anything. But he needs, and that's our privilege. Agreed? Thank you very much. From now on. From now on, we will not only not get depressed, we will never again be in a bad mood. <laughs> Sounds good? Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Have an amazing voice. Give a mother of echo to aim.